First thing almost no one talks about is the difference between realistic and cartoonish characters. Faces of the realistic characters have much more details, so it is harder for AI to recreate them. Cartoon characters, on the contrary, are made up of more basic shapes, so the consistency requirements for the cartoon characters are lower if I can say so. What I want to say is that some stylized non-realistic pictures are much easier and cheaper to generate. And there's one psychological aspect. People by default are very attentive to other people's faces. This means that lack of consistency and other imperfections of the realistic AI-generated faces will be detected immediately. Now let's move from theory to practice. I'll use Flux Context, which allows you to edit uploaded picture with AI, like in ChatGPT, but keeping the objects on the image pretty consistent. You can try it on the official Black Forest Labs website for free. Links to all the tools mentioned in this video will be in the description. Here you can create up to 50 images for free. There's several options, but I'll use Edit this time. Here's the reference image with my character. I'll just type in Make Him Smile. And here's the result. Perfect. Now let's make him look surprised. The result still looks consistent, because all the objects are the same, and only face expression is changed. I can change location and pose of the character. In this case, shape of the head is just a little bit different from the original picture, but character still looks consistent enough. The same thing with this image. Small imperfections don't really spoil the result in general. Situation with realistic characters is different. For example, I want to turn the character's head to the left. Both images look really close to the original this time. But what if I want to make her look serious? Can you say that this is the same person? There's some kind of similar Similarity, but I cannot say that this is consistent character. I'll try another face expression. I tried to make her look surprised. Result doesn't look very bad, but I can't say that character is 100% the same in this case too. Cartoon consistent characters can be created basically in any image generator with corresponding features, but I don't recommend you to use ChatGPT or Google's ImageFX and Whisk if you want to get photorealistic consistent character. ChatGPT is not the best choice if you want to generate something realistic at all, and it's hard to maintain consistency of your real realistic character here. Google's image generation tools don't allow you to create realistic characters from the uploaded image. And if you'll try to generate character inside of one of these tools from scratch, consistency won't be 100% stable. Second important thing is the method of making the character consistent. Different services use different methods. They're prompting methods and character reference options. So which one is the most effective? By prompting methods, I don't mean just use detailed prompts in regular image generation mode and pray that the character will be consistent. But for example, in ImageFX and Whisk from Google, you should use character description and locked seed value. As I mentioned before, these services are better for creating some non-realistic characters. So I want to generate some 3D cartoon male character. I asked ChatGPT to generate detailed character description, so I'll copy and paste it in the prompt area. Prompt consists of character and environment descriptions. In the settings, I'll set aspect ratio to mobile portrait. Here is seed value, which should be locked. Seed value is just number which defines the starting conditions of the generation. And if you use the same seed value and subject description, you significantly increase your chances to get consistent characters or other objects. Really good result. Faces are almost the same on all four images. Yes, body proportions can be even more consistent. In such cases, you just have to provide more detailed description of the character's figure. If you want to place the same character into different setting or location, you just have to keep the same seed value. Describe the clothes of your character, for example, and add the description of the location. But basic character description should be the same. In this case, I want to turn this guy into medieval soldier with shield and axe, and the location will be changed to forest. Not bad. You can see that character looks a little bit different on the first couple of images. Guy on the second image is taller, and the difference between the shapes of the faces is noticeable. These two pictures have some differences, but these are more consistent, and the character looks not so different from previous generation. But you also should know that if you lock seed value in some other image generator, it will work a little bit differently. For example, in services like Leonardo AI that uses stable diffusion models, you can reuse the same value. If you use the same seed value, prompt, and the same settings in different generations, you'll be able to get exactly the same images in these generations. So I copied the seed of this generation and pasted it in the corresponding field of the advanced settings. So now I have two 100% similar generations. If I change some settings or prompt, while seed remains the same, generations will be just slightly different. But you can see that in this case, reuse of the seed value doesn't make the objects or characters more consistent on each image. It just makes different generations more similar. I just mentioned Stable Diffusion, which is open source image generation technology. And the next prompting method works only with Stable Diffusion models. Lots of online image generators use these models, but in this case, I'll use Leonardo AI. These nine models are based on Stable Diffusion. I'll use some realistic model. 
In this case, I don't need some additional settings. Here just should be detailed character description and some name. Each name affects the appearance of the character and creates consistency. My character's name is Anne Mary Alto. You can see that the face looks very specific, and this makes it more realistic. What about consistency? It's not 100% perfect, obviously, but two or maybe three images look good enough. Okay, let's make character look happy. I just added corresponding words to the prompt. Not bad. You can increase priority of some parts of your prompt by adding parentheses. In this case, nothing really changed. Characters still looks pretty recognizable, like in previous generations. Nice. I'll change character's name to Samantha Smith, and I'll remove blue eyes from the prompt. You can see some similarity to the character I previously created because this model creates little bit similar types of faces, but shapes of the nose and lips were changed significantly. I'll copy the prompt I used to create my first character. Obvious disadvantage of this prompting method is that you cannot predict how the name will affect character's appearance. And here's another thing you should remember. The same character generated with different stable diffusion models or style presets can look little bit differently. Character reference option can be used if you already have at least one image of your character. It can be AI generated or you can use photo of an existing person of course. Such services like Midjourney, OpenArt, Design, Runway and many other generators have this feature. Some generators allow you to use single image as a reference. Others create characters from multiple images of your character from different sides, in different poses, etc. Here's how character reference option looks in Runway, which is not only video generator now. I'll create new session to start generating images. In the reference section, you can add image of any object or person. Here's picture of my character. I can give this image some random name to be able to mention it in my prompt. So now I can use at symbol and select the image with the girl. She will be standing amidst a tropical forest at evening. There are some pre-made visual styles you can choose from. I won't use them in this case. Aspect ratio will be 3 by 4, and I want to get 4 images in one generation. The advantage of Runway is that you have 125 free initial credits, so you can test character reference option for free. Lower quality images are a little bit cheaper. And here's the result. Girl on all the generated images looks really similar to the reference. As you can see, Runway copies not only face but all the other details like clothing, haircut, etc. But I want to make her close to the camera, and this time, Forest will be replaced with the city. I want to see if Runway will be able to recreate all the small details of the character's face, and I set the quality to 1080p. You can see that the result is just perfect. All the facial details have been accurately recreated. In Runway, I used only one reference image. Design AI allows you to use multiple pictures to create consistent character. This service is really similar to OpenArt. Both of them have lots of useful AI tools, including consistent character generation features. Both use pretty similar character generation workflow, but Design AI provides few initial free credits so you can test its consistent character generator. The only thing is that you cannot create your own characters with free account. You can select one from the list of pre-made characters. Here you can see the images this cartoon character is made from. And there are two realistic characters. I'll select male character Richie. Here you can see basic character description. It includes the facial features, clothing, and visual style. In character action and the scene text area, you can describe what should happen on the generated images. And there are additional settings common for image generators. I'll select some vertical aspect ratio. I'll get two variations in one generation. Here's what I got. The man on both images looks really consistent. The only thing I don't like is this twisted hand. Okay, let's make him closer to the camera. The level of consistency is really high, but of course it is hard to keep the same shape of the glasses all the time. Of course, I can change character description. For example, I'll make the hat red and the t-shirt will be blue and I'll remove black suspenders. In character action and scene section, I specified that he should smile. Great, everything corresponds my prompt except these suspenders, probably because these black suspenders appear on the reference pictures. Services where you can use multiple reference images can be useful if you want to generate images of yourself, for example. So in such cases, photos from different angles with different facial expressions will help you a lot. The next important thing you should know is what kind of reference images you should use to maximize quality of the output. First of all, if you use single reference image, it should be front view, person should be close to the camera, quality of the image should be as high as possible, face must be clearly visible with without harsh shadows or blurry spots. Even if you use multiple reference images, you should have at least one picture that meets these criteria. 
No matter if you use prompting methods or character reference features, you should repeat key traits in your prompts. In case with prompting methods, the character's appearance completely depends on your prompt, so different prompts will lead to inconsistent result. But even character reference tools can create characters with little bit random haircut, outfit, facial expressions, etc. if you don't specify these things in the prompt. And the last thing I wanted to say is that you shouldn't always focus on just one tool. Each service has its pros and cons, so it's hard to find one perfect tool for all possible cases. I recommend you to keep an eye out for updates to existing generators and the emergence of new ones.